Yeah, and we continue with a similar topic that are um, bits apps, which is um, a name for a class of software containers. So um, I'm going to introduce bits apps, and bits stands for brain imaging data structure. And the bits apps are a convenient way of distributing neuroimaging software in software containers. Um, bits apps rely on the recently, recently proposed bits standard, which is a way to organize files from neuroimaging data, from neuroimaging studies. And I will demonstrate how to run bits apps on your data and um, also how to run it on the science cloud, not only on your, on your laptop. So if you ever try to run um, old analyses again, on a new computer that didn't have all the right software installed and you tried to rerun your analyses and you failed miserably. Or if you ever tried to rerun analyses uh, performed by a former lab member and you somehow have um, software, software missing uh, and you failed miserably. Um, or if you ever tried to install another lab's very cool software that's very tricky to install and you failed miserably then this talk is for you. So, um, it's again about, amongst other things, about reproducibility. So science that does not replicate is a waste of everyone's time and money. And what can we do to, um, to make <coughs> replication easy with software? So we should be able to rerun old analyses on the same data or on new data. And um, with, the, with my old data, I should be able to I should be able to produce the same results. Or um, other scientists should be able to run my analysis on their data and um, produce similar results, or be able to produce similar results. And having the code available from a previous project or from another lab and being really able to perform this analysis are not the same thing. Um, software installation can be painful, there might be tricky dependency structures and um, different software versions can also yield different results. So um, it would be great if we would have some kind of more convenient way to um, transport software. And here comes bits apps. Um, bits apps are easy to use, accessible and reproducible, or foster reproducibility. And um, you can find the, the preprint here. It's um, a project started or spearheaded by Chris Kovalevsky, and um, a bunch of, of people all the world joined and um, worked on that. So, BitSap supportable neuroimaging pipelines. They're shipped as Docker software containers. Um, which are more lightweight than virtual machines, but also not um, as full. And um, yeah, the, the project is spearheaded by Chris Kovalevsky from the Stanford Center for Reproducible Neuroscience. And here's a list of, of bits apps you are uh, able to find online. So each of these lines is an app. For instance, we have um, Freezer for here or broccoli, um, or the A toolbox, and um, so you can download each of these apps um, onto your computer. And um, those can be downloaded from Docker Hub via the command line. So the idea is that each of these apps um, works with bits data as input. And bits data is um, coming from the same people, is a simple and intuitive way to organize and describe your neuroimaging and behavioral data. So it boils down to being just a way to name files and to organize them in folders. So we would have a bits data set here that has several subjects, sub so one, two, three, four, and each of these subjects has anatomical data, functional data, diffusion weighted data and um, the files in those folders have a, um, a fixed format as well, or the names are fixed as well. So um, if you now don't need to 
as a pipeline developer, now we need to um, think about how people might organize their data differently because they all follow the standard. Then you can easily um, apply different pipelines, different data sets um, without a huge headache. And a couple of design principles of those bits are portability, so it should work in a plug and play fashion. You don't need to, you should not have to um, set options in a complicated way or um, spend a lot of time installing stuff, which really just work out of the box. And to process your data, you need to know which bits app you would like to use. You need to have the input folder ready. You need to know where you want to write the output data to, and you can specify some app specific options. And it's all very white box, so you can use this as a box and plug and play, but you can always take a look under the hood and see what code is, is being run. And um, all the types have um, a participant and a group level phase. So for the participant subject level workflows, um, this could be some, some pre-processing, for instance, where you use your fMRI data and you motion correct it and you slice time correcting and you noise it. And this can be run in parallel, so the um, different subjects are not connected here. And after you have your pre-processed data from the subject level, there is this group level stage where you then can run statistics or create templates. <clears throat> and as an example, if we um, want to run an analysis, an analysis from a, another lab, and they provided an iPipe workflow, like this pipelining software that we are going to see tomorrow. And um, the pipeline requires NiPipe, FSL, FreeSurfer, and ANTS. Then we'll need to install Python, NiPipe, FSL, FreeSurfer, and ANTS. We need to wrangle the data and input format that the, that the pipeline can understand. And since it's NiPipe, we can easily run it on our 32 core machine. But what if we want to port it to the Science Cloud? Then we also need to put effort into porting the, the analysis to the new environment. However, if this lab provides a bits app, and uh, provides the pipeline as a bits app, then all you need to do is install Docker. Um, Docker is a program that runs the software containers. And then you can download the app, just write Docker pull and the app name. And um, then you can run the entire analysis with one command. And once the data is formatted according to the bit standard, then you can run um, each of the bits apps I just showed you before with your data. So you can put your data into all of the bits apps. And um, using bits wraps, you can also use the science cloud to analyze your data without needing to think about how to reorganize or to rewrite everything. So um, as an example, how to run uh, Tracula as a bits app. Uh, Tracula is this, this tool provided by the free software people. Um, it's, um, um, it takes diffusion-weighted images and free surfer data and um, reconstructs major white matter pathways. And you can, of course, do this with um, your terminal and, and run a couple of lines of code. Or you can use the um, Tracula Bits app. Um, and for, for the Bits app, all you need is the data, the input data, formatted according to the bit standard. And then you can run the participant level, which boils down to um, running this command in the terminal. So we have um, Docker Run. This tells Docker, this program that runs the software containers, to run a software container. Um, then we have the name of the bits app here. We have um, here we map some local folders into the bits app so that the container is kind of encapsulated, but we can make links to the outside world. And this is done here by this, this mapping. And um, if our, our data on our hard drive lies in data, source data, and we map it to slash bits dataset, then 
from within the software container, we will see a folder called um, bits dataset, and this contains all our data. So we now specify the input data, we specify the output folder, we specify the level that we want to run, so this is the participant level, and then we can give some additional information that needs to be there for, for this specific app to, to run. And I told you that you can download the, the software container with this command, but this isn't even necessary because if you run um, Docker run and you don't have the container downloaded before, then this um, command also downloads the container. So everything you need to do to run Dracula is install Docker, have your, um, your input data as bits, and then you can run this command. Um, after having done this for all your subjects, you can run the group level analysis, and if you take a look, those two commands are nearly the same, but instead of participant, you specify group here. But everything else stays the same, and this runs um, um, the group analysis. Okay, so you can do this on your laptop, but if um, the computation that's needed, needed to be done for the participant level is very uh, computationally expensive, like for Freezer, for, for Dracula, then you might run into bottlenecks there. So what you can do is you can use the Science Cloud, um, and the Science Cloud has a lot of a lot of computational nodes and a lot of virtual CPUs, much more than your laptop. So you will be able um, to run your analysis there much faster. And um, all you need, in addition to everything we've got before, is bits wraps, and bits wraps is um, able to run bits apps on the science cloud. And it's merely a thin wrap around GCA3Pi, the uh, tool that the S3 IT guys are developing. And for the participant level, so if you um, start the bits apps job, then um, for your entire for your entire sample, then the participant level computation is performed in parallel, so each participant is um, calculated on a new instance, on a new job, on a new virtual computer. And after this is done, you can run the group analysis, and this aggregates your data. So, um, this is the only command you need to run your participant level of analysis here, so we again, we now use bits reps start this um, command to run the Dracula app. We give it the input and the output path here and give it the participant level again. And um, these are some additional options. So you only need to run this command and then um, your entire study is being run. So your participant level is being computed no matter whether you have one participant or 2,000. Okay, so in summary, those bits apps are software containers with neuro imaging analysis pipelines. And once your data is formatted according to the bits standard, you can run all bits apps on them. And the only things you need is a bits app, an input folder, and an output folder. Um, and via the, via the bits wraps tool, you can easily run the bits apps on the science cloud and save a lot of computation time. Um, real world time. And compared to the virtual machines that Jessica uh, just demonstrated, those bits wraps, or this, sorry, the, the software containers are a more recent development. Um, they are more lightweight. They, they share more resources with um, other containers, for instance but they come with drawbacks like um, having no graphical user interface, at least most of the time. So if you, if you want to view any images of brains, you can really do this in the it's apps context or in the software container context. Um, but they're very lightweight and um, easy to, to distribute. 